Pickle, Meryl Marco, Van Gordon Sauter, Harry Shearer, and I talk about subjects that are relatively important. In the third segment, Burning Questions, we talk about subjects that are relatively absurd. The latter was the case on our first show, April 21st, 1989. But I have to give you a little background before we get to that. On American Bandstand, there used to be a segment called Rate the Record. Dick Clark would yank a couple of kids off the dance floor, play a new song for them, and ask them whether they thought it would be a hit. They were to give the record a rating on a scale of 33 to 98. Well, back on April 21st, I asked the word of mouth panel to rate a record. The record was called Hey Mr. Dealer. The artist, Morton Downey Jr. Hey there, Mr. Dealer, you drug pushing son of a bitch. Messing up the minds of the kids of America just to make your fat ass rich. Well, we could play more. It goes on like that. Is that you real? Get, yes, that, that's, that is, is that, right? that is the new album, Morton Downey Jr. Sings. And, uh, and, and, and following the premise, uh, Van, uh, between 33 and 98, how would you rate the record? Greed. That's not a number. 33. Why? Well, I, I, it's preposterous. I mean, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> vulgar and deplorable. I mean, I, I mean, the man is outrageous under the best of circumstances. Here, he's just banal. It's, it's ridiculous. It does seem to me the sentiments are unexceptionable. <laughs> well, how about the melody? Uh, the melody does not linger on. I, I think uh, 33, or is it possible to go a little lower? We'll give Morton a 32. <laughs> this, was, this was, you know, one of the most common comments that I used to hear on, on Rate the Record was, uh, was that the, 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 one of the kids would say something about, well, I couldn't understand the words, but the lyrics were catchy. You know, so. <laughs> Between 33 and 98, and have you worked this out as well as you worked out the last one? <laughs> well, I think it had a nice beat. I think he could dance to it, and i got to give it like a 95. I think the guy, I take exception with some of the polish. But I think the guy's got the voice of a nightingale. And you know, I've seen him stretch and grow as an artist. I'd like to see him do more. I'd like to see him get into interpretive dance. Yeah. I think he moves like a jaguar. While Morton Downey Jr. was being laughed at, not just by this panel, but by right thinking people everywhere, Elvis Presley was being lionized yet again. It was predicted that by the middle of next year, the United States Postal Service will have issued an Elvis Presley stamp. Question, who else would you like to see honored with his face on a stamp, and why? Philo T. Farnsworth, the leading inventor of television. Another cosmic figure who not only made a contribution to television, but left an ad admonition for people like you. Philo said, TV is a gift from God, and God will hold those who utilize this divine instrument accountable to him. Put your sunglasses Keep on. it in mind. We know from the Old Testament what kind of sense of humor God has, by the way. And not to mention Philo Farnsworth. Who is your choice? Well, as long as we're going down this dubious... We, we don't have to go down this dubious, this dubious way. You can redirect us, Richard, if you'd no, like. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the U.S. Postal Service, as long as oh. it's going down this dubious road. They have <clears throat> rushed past a whole host of people. I think of Fatty Arbuckle. <laughs> I think of uh, uh, Errol Flynn. There are all kinds of people. At One least, sees a pattern here. At least as dubious in their contributions to American thought, morals, and life in general as Elvis Presley. So why are they starting at the at the back end of the trail here? All right, here's our consumer affairs reporter with her answer, Meryl. The only person I could think of I would like to see get a stamp was the guy who wrote this copy on this bag of potato chips I bought. It, you'll, they're guaranteed, it says. We guarantee that these are the best, tasting, crunchiest potato chips you've ever had. If you're not totally satisfied, drop us a line and tell us why. We'll send you back a coupon redeemable for another bag of potato <laughs> chips. If you don't like them, you send them a letter and, and they, they send, send you more. more. It's endless. That's, I think, a great idea. I wonder if they that, honor people uh, for logic with that, stamps. That is a true American nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> Speaking of nightmares, there was a rumor making the rounds for a short time this year that Robin Givens would be offered a job as color commentator the next time her ex-husband, Mike Tyson, defended his heavyweight boxing championship. Why do I say, speaking of nightmares? The ultimate nightmare of any man, even a man <laughs> as strong as Mike Tyson, is to have his first wife make 
public comments about aspects of his persona. He's taken my answer. Oh, I like that idea. But, though. but I had this vision. Of, isn't it typical of him? She's sitting. Isn't it typical of him? It's just typical of him. That's the way he's always been. You know, you know, I, I've been telling you for years. That's Look at that. That's just exactly what he does. I'm telling you. I mean, it's just going to be. Sandra happy. Jennings reviewing Bill Hurt's next movie. <laughs> exactly. Well, that was a great idea, isn't it? It's really, it's principle. got a nice, there's a whole There's a whole rich, thing you, you, you propose here yeah. a rich but, but, possibility. But, yeah. <laughs> We will be back with more of our best of burning questions after this. You've just watched two minutes of commercials, and those of us here at Word of Mouth thank you for your attention and ask you for more attention. Here is another half a minute's worth of commercial. I'm Linda Ellerby. A few months ago in a national test, people said they liked Maxwell House coffee better than Folgers coffee. Those people said it tasted rich. What do other people say? Willard Scott? Ask him. I'm here with firefighter Bill Jones. Bill, which coffee do you really like better? Maxwell House. Got a rich taste. Hey, uh, now can I ride on your hook and ladder? I drive. Right, Willard. People keep saying Maxwell House is better. You taste it. Decide for yourself. That commercial proved to be a controversial one for its principal spokesperson, Linda Ellerby. Ellerby used to be a network news correspondent and was, at the time of the commercial, a commentator for CNN. Thus the controversy. Should a journalist be pitching products? I think it's perfectly acceptable. Of course you do. And all these overwrought social critics who somehow <laughs> thinks she has desecrated the Madonna are fools as ever. Everyone knows that's not a news show with a big Maxwell house sign and a Maxwell coffee. She is, she's not a journalist, she's a commentator, she's a freelance writer. She's perfectly entitled to do well, that. Well, that's all right to say, but what about Willard Scott? I now suspect his entire weather reporting. <laughs> I, I mean, where, where is a man to turn anymore? <laughs> if Willard Scott can't be relied on as an absolutely objective source, I don't know. I don't well, know what's I going to happen. It's not about coffee, but still about weather. Well, nonetheless, I think he does make a good point. You didn't tell me when we discussed this topic on the telephone that it, it starts with a giant thing saying Maxwell House, House Coffee behind the lady. I mean, you can't well, I was supposed this. to describe every frame of this to you? Well, well I mean, you know, you got me all hotted up about so, this insidiousness. And that 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 I did not insidious. say it was insidious. <laughs> And, and neither of you thinks it is. I mean, this is okay. We're it's perfectly acceptable. Perfectly she, she's not a working well, journalist in the traditional sense. I would like to see it on Channel One. On what? It's the first on, on segment. On Channel One. Uh, Van, 15 minutes ago, Channel oh, One, we Channel were... One, we... <laughs> Meryl, what do you think about this? Can you well, be a voice for ethics in this wilderness? Mm -hmm. Well, I gave this some serious thought, and when I think seriously, I like to drink Mott's Clamato juice, a deliciously seasoned clam and flavored tomato flavored cocktail. You know, it's the drink that I like. It's the one to be drinking when you want to be thinking. Well, there she is with a bottle of Clamato juice. You saw her earlier in the show reading the back of a potato chip bag. What we do on Word of Mouth is discuss issues of the culture. Meryl Marco has become our specialist in the culture of consumerism. She has become such a specialist, in fact, that Merrill's Corner is a distinct and usually surprising part of our proceedings. <laughs> Merrill, may I turn it over to you? But Merrill's Corner. Do I have uh, a second? All right. Merrill's Corner, my topic today. Well, I have one of those. Welcome to. Do you? Yeah. And now you have another one. I'd like to have this after. My topic is dog toys. I would like to discuss the concept. Why is your topic dog toys? Uh, now I have to have reasons for my topics? <laughs> it's hard enough to come up with an M topic. That's a medium of communication, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, for heaven's sake. Well, because it's a, of some concern to me. It's I don't way. have little Toby to complain about. <laughs> so I have to talk about my dog. And my these are supposed to be, you know, toys for my dog to uh, play with. And I don't even get the idea. I mean, 
when you think about it, this is this is your squeaking plastic pork chop. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, when you think about it, a dog is a creature of smell. Now, he's not going to buy that this is a pork chop, right? But if he does, what is he supposed to be thinking when he's eating it? He's going, this is the toughest, noisiest pork chop I've ever eaten. <laughs> and then he's thinking, and look at the color on that. I'm going to get trichinosis, right? It's not even cooked. <laughs> so I'm thinking this is stressful for your dog. Just that and this. Think how stressful this is. He's not. Th th if your dog gets this newspaper, the Daily Grail, don't you suppose it's got to be stressful to be thinking, I've had a subscription to this paper for I don't know how long now. It's the same damn headline every day. I got to write to the publisher. It's got to be really uh, a, a stressful thing for your dog. I think it could give your dog ulcers. Your point is, these are not a service. These are just the opposite. I think this dog. is the opposite of a toy. Well, while we're on the subject of tacky products, how about the derrieres of Roseanne Barr and her fiance, Tom Arnold? It was reported that on more than one occasion this year, Barr and Arnold dropped their pants in public places to reveal tattoos on their derrieres. She has his name tattooed on her right cheek, and he has her name tattooed on his left cheek. The question I asked the panel was this. What should Tom and Roseanne do about their tattoos when they break up? Crash diets, hoping the shrinkage will be so <laughs> acute that the marks will resemble the tiger that George Schultz has tattooed on his rump. <laughs> Richard? Ew, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Have we offended your sensibilities? Finally, finally, here is something I do not believe the First Amendment extends to. <laughs> no, it the First Amendment does not get down that low. Before you answer, let me tell you that the reason I phrased the question as I did, uh, when they break up, is, is something you've articulated on this show a couple times. Specifically about celebrities, you remember I you have said... I predicted they would be breaking up. No, no, you said the louder the protestations of love initially, the quicker the divorce comes. Start Is that right? Start the countdown calendar. Start, start the, the countdown. office yeah. pool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, I guess you could start the office pool here, yeah, because she's saying about how, how well it's going. Yeah, she's in trouble. Well, I'm thinking what, what she's got the option, hers probably says Tom, right? So she's got the option of having an A tattooed on there and making it seem like some sort of a symbolic, ex eccentric, ironic statement, Adam. When people ask her, she'll say, oh, it's about oh, I, I atoms see, yeah. and stuff. He, on the other hand, with Roseanne, he has to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have gone too long in this program without having heard from Harry Shearer. Harry has filled in for Merrill and Richard and Van on numerous occasions and provided word of mouth with many of its best moments. Here he is answering the question, what do you think of PBS pledge breaks? As you, Eric, uh, am at a certain disadvantage in discussing this because I do... Uh, not to plug or anything, not to take advantage of this forum, but I do a weekly radio show which is heard nationally on public radio stations all over this great country of ours. There's a certain gutlessness here that precludes your answering the question honestly? No. Should we it, talk to people in commercial television? Absolutely not. I want right. my time. All right. Um, I despise this. Uh, <laughs> I, I stay away from the place when fundraising time comes around. I'm notorious for it. I, like, make myself scarce. Uh, it's like... I, f I wouldn't want to listen to it. I certainly wouldn't want to do it. But in terms of public television, I think the problem is not that uh, they spend too much time asking for money for viewers, but that there just aren't enough oil companies to go around. <laughs> Harry was responsible for the biggest laugh I've ever had on this show. It came at the end of one of the shows, and I was laughing so hard I could barely bring myself to say goodnight. Remember that silly controversy a few months ago when TV Guide put Oprah Winfrey's head atop Anne Margaret's body on its cover? Well, the burning question was, what other celebrity's head would you like to see atop a different celebrity's body? When I got to Harry, we were almost out of time. Ten seconds, comment on this. Can you I'd like it? to see, sh I, sure I can do it. You want me to do it now? <laughs> well, in five <laughs> seconds, In five Harry. seconds, I would like to see, see Cher's head on Cher's real body with all the stuff they cut off, put back on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is an ideal time for us to take another break, give you a chance to envision Cher's head on top of her real body, if you're so inclined. Among the topics when we come back will be Jacqueline Smith's perfume, Aaron Spelling's house, and Shirley MacLaine's chakras. <laughs> Howard Rosenberg, the Pulitzer Prize-winning television critic of the Los Angeles Times, 
was a member of our panel one day when one of our burning questions concerned celebrity how-to videos. Jane Fonda, of course, is the best-known figure in the field and has the best-known figure in the field, telling us how to be physically fit in her workout videos. But back in May, Shirley MacLaine told us how to be spiritually fit with a new inner workout video. What we did on the show was present a clip of it and then go on from there. Through this chakra, we fall in love. And through this chakra, we decide how harmonious we desire to be in our lives. We don't fall up in love, we fall down in love. That is to say, we feel love through this energy center of the heart chakra, and then we naturally move that love down to the emotional center, the solar plexus chakra, and then we feel it in the sexual chakra. And it is from the love, the emotion, and the sexuality that we move down to the grounding chakra, where we then have feelings of settling down. This is, this is all <laughs> seen television. <laughs> well, there's certainly no disputing any of that, <laughs> is there? Uh, does she also the, uh, sell chakra absorbers? <laughs> that's, that's coming up on, on the sequel, actually, to this video. Actually, there are a lot of questions here, but the one we're going to start out with to the panelists no answers. is this. What celebrity who has not yet made a how-to video would you like to see make one, and what would you like that celebrity to teach you how to do? Or if I'm distracting you from more comments about Shirley, just go back to it. Van? Well, I'm going to go serious this time. I, I think Sean Connery should make a, uh, a video on how to go through middle age with distinction and 